Straight down. Stupid kids prank calling my ass and everything. What the heck? So, he wants to find out if it was a murder or not. 
Yes. And I'm willing to pay you ten thousand dollars to figure out if it was a murder or not. Five thousand if we solve the case. Okay. All right. Pleasure doing business with you, and we'll get back to you on the case. Okay. All right. Right after the interview, I went and visited my old friend at the police station. Dan, how's it going? Good, good. So, um, I've been put on this case. Um, what do you know about Aaron Montag? Oh boy, not that case. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Let's see, where is that file? Ah, here we go. Here's his brief. Okay. Oh, wow. He was on witness protection. Mm-hmm. Informant. Informant, huh? Mm hmm On what? Big Mob. Oh. Here. Oh, the massacre. Yeah, that was a big one. It's the case file. They would have eaten him alive if he stayed in his town. Exactly. Oh, darn it. Wow. And um, because I'm an extremely nice guy... Chase. Okay. Now, technically you wouldn't be allowed to pick this out, but since you're almost family, let's sign out my name. <laughs> Thank you very much. I guess I'm on the computer too. Okay. Alright, and enter. Thank you. I'll bring this back at ASAP. Okay. I just needed a couple of things out of it. Okay. That night, Rick and I went and investigated Aaron Montag's house, hoping to prove that he was murdered. He was. But why would he have a bottle of aspirin? That's empty, and why would he have one that's almost empty? Exactly. Very interesting. Now, let's see what's in the kitchen. So then, he comes out here with his aspirin, pours the entire thing in his wine glass, anywhere in this room, one of these counters. That's not important. Next is he walks in this bedroom. Okay. So now he's in the bedroom. He walks in here from here. Dies. So now I'm not sure the answer's in here though. Evidence seems to point in the living room. Okay, he wouldn't have died that quickly if he walked from there to there. Right. He would have to go to sleep. Yeah. Or and he would have been covered. I noticed the body was uncovered in the pictures. I think there's a struggle. If there's a murder, there's likely to be a struggle. And the only working telephone in this house is in the living room. Let's check it out. I already see a problem. Look at this. Why would he have this chair at this angle? the hall ends. Realistically, it should be like this. In fact, marks on the carpet. Yeah. Where it used to be like that. Yeah, I see what you mean. Corresponding with the stool, too. Now, focusing on the phone. It wasn't plugged in. Police could have done that. No. They were too focused on the 
supposed crime scene in the bedroom. They weren't even in this room where I knew that. Yeah, Yes. Phone's on the hook backwards. And look at these scratches. Yeah, that's a bad bang. Look, there's marks on the floor too. Hang This phone like this, and something, and a person was pushed into it. It would land right here, where the scratch marks are. Right. So I'm guessing someone or something was pushed into this, um, or it right. was knocked over. You're right. I think what happened was. He was poisoned. He knew he was poisoned. He didn't do it himself. So... Yeah, if you also notice over here, there's more marks on the floor. Like, maybe the chair got knocked over or something? Yeah. I think he came in. There was a stroke of some sort. He tried to call the cops. Or call 911. Poison control. But, he was shoved into the phone, or the chair was shoved into the phone. It crashes to the ground. He reaches for it, and it's unplugged. Hey, look at this. What? There's smears on the floor. Like, hands were there. You're right. Look, still stuck. See? Right there. Yeah. I do. You know what? This isn't a suicide, it was a homicide. Well, Chris was right. We have to give them very strong evidence. This is all circumstantial. You're right. I mean, it could have happened from anything. And I'm sure the perp was smart enough to have gloves. That's why there's no fingerprints. Ah, but the question is what kind of gloves? If he had leather gloves, he could have left some marks. If he had like some cloth gloves, like um, all those different kind of strands and everything, he could have left some of those behind. You're right. But if he was wearing those plastic doctor gloves, then nothing. Just about nothing. All right. I say we go back to Chris and tell him this was a homicide. I agree. Let's go. Oh, do it this way. The next day, I visited my friend at the police station again, this time looking for phone records. Hi. Hi, what's up, Dan? How much? Hey. I got those uh, phone records that you were asking for. You're lucky. I was just about to leave. Oh, great. <laughs> oh. You know what? Hmm. Look at this. Someone named Arnold Morris called the house twice. Once, just before the murder took place. That's because weird. he was distracted by something. Thank you very much. This will be very important in the case. You're welcome. Night. Anytime. But Next, I had to interview Arnold Morris. Mr. Montag. Yeah, we were friends. I see. And, uh, we noticed in the phone records that you called him twice the day he died. Could you explain? I wanted to talk to him because we hadn't talked to him in a while. Where were you the night he died? I was here. Can you prove that? Do you have a car? 
Once again. Alright, well, uh, thank you for your time. We'll, uh, we'll just let ourselves out. Right, Rick? Alright. Yeah. We'll see you later. I don't know about you, Rick. This guy's dirty. Definitely. I mean, his, he called the house two times. Once before, right before the murder. Now we just gotta figure out how he did it. Yeah, definitely. First thing we have to do now is call up Chris and see if Mr. Uh, Montag really did have a friend who was paralyzed or went by that name. Hey, Mr. Dixon, this is Dan Bradley. Yeah, we just wanted to know if um, Mr. Montag had a friend named Arnold who was paralyzed? No, I knew all of his friends. None of them were paralyzed. Oh, I see. Alright, thank you. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bradley. Next morning, we went to go see Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon? Mr. Dixon? You there? It's Dan Bradley and Rick. Okay. You go that way, I'll go this way. Got it. Oh, uh, Rick? What's up? Alright. Why don't you go call the cops? Yeah, make sure you don't touch anything. Someone definitely wants us dead. I don't know about you, Rick, but even though Chris Dixon's gone, I think justice should always be served. I agree. Let's still solve the case. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's get cracking. Now think, how could he have pulled off the murder? We know that there was a struggle and he covered it up. Does he have an alibi for that night? Yeah, he says he was at home. He, he said he was at home trying to call him. Wait a minute now. I know how that worked. He called him once. And it was like in the afternoon, remember that? Mm -hmm. Maybe he called to see if anyone was home, and there was nobody home. Because it ended up being a message, and no one answered it. Mm -hmm. And then, he was called just minutes before he died. Ten minutes. Maybe he was distracted. You saw he has no phone anywhere else in the house, except for in that living room. Mm -hmm. And he was on witness protection, you know. So maybe he obviously had some something to do with the mafia, and they wanted revenge. I think that Arnold called him to distract him, and then when there was no answer, he went back. But while he was.
extracted. He put some, he put those crushed pills in his wine. And then distracted him long enough for him to die. How could he though? Because he's paralyzed. He's got help in his house. Did you notice his wheels on his wheelchair? They're not big enough. He should push by themselves. And although he was pulling it off, I mean, he was rolling around like this. But why would a paralyzed guy do that? Why would he bother with something like that? He would just have Yeah, he would have big someone push him around on an automatic wheelchair. Or would, he or would have an automatic wheelchair. Yeah. Of course, he has use of his arm, so he would just need a big wheeled one. Yeah. He's our guy. He did it. Hi, sorry to keep bothering you, but it's okay. here's your case file. Thank you. Yep. Uh, I have some stuff for you. How is that picture that you asked for? My God. They're the same guy. Ryan Dean. He's been on the run for ten years. What you know about him? I know that his father was playing this big mob massacre. That's right, his dad was killed by police. He was on the run. Montag was the only witness. Case closed. Good job. Thanks. Rick and I solved the case, but Ryan Dean was not through with us yet. definitely owed Rick one. He saved my life and subdued Ryan Dean.
Welcome to the team, Rick. Hello? Yes, this is Dan Bradley. Oh! Oh! Yeah, we ran right on it. Okay. Yeah, bye now. We got us a case. Mm -hmm.